I'm Claudia Catania, and you're listening to Playing On Air. You're about to hear To Be or Not To Be by Jacqueline Rheingold. It's directed by Michael Barakiva and features William Jackson Harper and Jen Harris. We see Franny, disheveled, in her studio apartment, on the phone, and waxing her legs. I know you told me it was over, and I respect that. I mean, I understand it, and I know you don't want to see me again, and I know I was not very nice to you at times, and I just want to say that I've had, well, a complete not nice ostomy and a total unlike ectomy. I've had all the not nice, unlikable parts removed, so if you call me, I'm sure we can work it out. I'm waxing my legs. Ah! I know you hated my hairy legs, so I'm waxing. I can't believe you haven't called me back. I heard you asked out my friend Eleanor, and I thought you'd like to know she has the papillomavirus <laughs> in her vagina and in her mouth, on her tongue, in case you happen to have kissed her already. Wouldn't worry about it, though. I'm sure it's fine. Okay, well, thanks for breaking my heart, and uh, I still really love you, and if you want to change your mind and give it another try, let me know. <laughs> ah! Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, help! Oh, there's, there's a human-sized bee in my apartment! Okay. Could you just, could you go? Please, could you, could you, shoo, shoo, just go. Okay, look, the, the, the park is a, a few blocks away. If you could just fly over there, I'm sure you'd be happier. You know, or, 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 or in the back, there's a garden uh, with plants. Or my neighbor downstairs, she has these window boxes, geraniums, and patients. I'm sure you're in the wrong place. Is this too bee? What? To be. Or not to be. It's a joke, right? I wouldn't make a joke like that. Okay, this is to be, but I'm sure it's the wrong building. 344 West 188th Street. Look, here's my purse. Take what you want. I only have $10, but I'll write down my PIN number and my bank's on the corner. I don't want your money. Then take the purse. It's a poochie. I don't want your poochie. Look, I'm possibly allergic, and my EpiPen will not be of much use in this case because you are, oh my God, you're so freaking big. You're like the biggest bee I have ever seen. I can't believe this is happening. Frank, help! There's a giant bee in my apartment. Could you come over, please? He's a jerk. Forget about him. What? You deserve better. Well, thank you. I, I will consider that. Now, now, please go away, or I'll call the police. Well, I, I don't think they'll come for a bee. <laughs> Look, I'm really afraid of you. I mean, I'm really afraid. Bees are, well, you know, they're my thing. You know, some people, it's snakes or heights or whatever, but for me, it's just bees. I won't hurt you. Well, that's nice to hear. Why would I hurt you? I don't know, because you're a bee. Have you been hurt before? Yes. Yellow jackets. No bees. Bees. I've been stung. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure you are in the wrong apartment. It's the right apartment. Th- then it's the wrong species. I'm a human. A female human. And you are not invited. How's that going for you? What? Being a female human? It's fine. It's... It's just fine. Work and love. It's all good. How's your job? It's fine. I'm a receptionist. It's a career change. I used to be a painter, very cutting edge. I didn't even use paint. I used bodily fluids. (laughs) But several others already claim that niche. You wouldn't believe what some people can do with their menstrual blood. So now I just, uh, I have a job and a boss and... And your human female love life? Well... My first relationships were with typical self-involved commitment phobes when I was between the ages of, say, 5 and 12. Then junior high was alcoholics, high school was drug addicts, college gay men, a guy who owned a duck. 
And then a physically challenged interpretive ice skater, meaning, you know, an amputee who'd skate with a kind of, you know, stick with a blade at the bottom. And then I married a guy who liked to put garlic in his ears. But I went away a lot with my boyfriend who was a puppeteer for the blind. Then my husband fell for a woman with no limbs. And I got pregnant, but I lost the baby. And the father, well, he was a Midwesterner, so... Then I had a slew of internet dates with incredibly boring men, which is, I guess, a sign of getting older. The men tell the stories that sound like intricate recipes on how to marinate poultry. Okay, you get out, or I'll spray you with this deadly bug spray. Empty. You like flowers, don't you, Franny? How did you know my name? These are for you. (gasps) Tulips are your favorite. How did you? Okay. Thanks for the delivery. You can put those down over there, and, and now you can go. Do you know how intoxicatingly beautiful you are? Okay, now that's a joke. We find you unbearably sexy. Who's we? We know you haven't even begun to tap into your erotic capacity. What's that smell? That's my nectar. <laughs> that's, that's not bad. <laughs> Franny Dembrose, you are wonderfully demanding, fascinatingly moody, exquisitely impossible to please, well. complicated, codependent, and controlling, perfect in all ways. Well. We want to give you everything you have always wanted but thought you couldn't have. Love, fulfillment, Hot sex. We will serve your every need. Oh, well. (laughs) We want you to be our queen. What? We've watched you. We've chosen you. We know you. What is this? You can run, but you can't hive. We even have a sense of humor. Hardly. Just think, you wouldn't have to work. You'd have plenty of time to read, to lounge, to do your art. Think of what you could paint with pollen. Okay, that's very nice of you, but um, why don't you get um, a real bee? We had a bad experience. She was a killer. So we've opted for this scientifically advanced, entomologically evolutionary, revolutionary solution. We find a very special human female and offer her a better life. Works well for all involved. If it works so well, what happened to your last one? She fell in love with a wasp. (laughs) Not recommended. The children will be confused. Okay. Franny, imagine yourself As queen, you'd never be alone again on a Friday night. You'd be serving the greater good by helping to cross-pollinate. Not to mention, we will please you in every way. Have you ever thought about being with more than one male and their only pleasure is your pleasure? Well, (laughs) um, look, it's nothing personal, but I find you, I'm sorry to say, Physically, um, repulsive? Oh, I think that could change. And I'm human. That, too, can change. Amelia Earhart? (laughs) She didn't disappear. She made a choice. (laughs) So can you. But what's wrong with being human? Have you read the paper lately? Your species isn't exactly living up to its potential. Amelia Earhart. I don't want to rush you, Franny, but my brothers and cousins are eagerly awaiting and time is quickly running out. Don't you want what I've offered? What is it you're reluctant to give up? Well, my apartment. A studio in Inwood. It's near the subway. You'd have your own hive. My job. That job sucks. There are perks. Like what? Um, frequent flyer miles. You won't need those. And there's Frank. Frank is a fly, a gnat, a roach. Besides, he's an actor. Forget Frank. Believe me, I've tried. 
Franny, oh, Franny, have you looked at your life lately? I prefer not to. All of your qualities that absolutely don't work as a female human will work like gangbusters as a bee. Things will get better. How long have you been saying that? The time heals all wounds. Then why are you still hurting? And why are you inflicting excruciating pain to your lovely legs? We like fuzzy. Really? Really. Weren't you the queen in your grade school play? Oh. Didn't you enjoy it? I loved it. But I didn't get to keep the crown. Yeah, I wanted that crown. You could have a crown. But still, wait, I'm terrified of you. I see a bee, I flee. It's kind of like a flight or flight kind of thing. You know, I, I don't go on picnics. I avoid practically the entire outdoors because of you. What exactly are you afraid of? Pain, death, dying alone, that sort of thing. Touch my stinger. What? Touch it. No. Don't you think it's time to change? That's a pretty big change. I know you, Franny D'Ambrose. The reason you're afraid of me is because you are me. In your heart, you're a bee. Touch it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, it's, it's nice. Isn't it? Mm, God, it's warm. Yes. Powerful. Yes. It's growing. Yes. Oh, and that smell, your nectar. Yes. That sound. What, what's, what's that sound? Ah! My cousins and brothers. Here to serve you. Um, yeah. Whew, what are they doing? Touching you. Tickling you. <laughs> trying to please you. Oh, my... Ooh. Whoa. What are you putting on me? These are your stripes. Oh, they're so, they're so, they're so soft. Your antennae. Oh. Here are your wings. Oh, God, they're beautiful. I... <laughs> I can't believe a bee kissed me. Oh, I feel different. What's your name? Dave the Bee. <laughs> Hi, Dave. <laughs> Let it rain. Um, but forget uh, it. Um, but it 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 might be my boss or. It's time. But uh, what if it's Let's Frank? Let's go. Hello, Frank. Go. Oh, I'm glad you called. What? You want me to stop calling? You're really happy since we broke up? You're still seeing my friend Eleanor? You've asked her to marry you? Great! That's just, that's just, that's great! That is great! Franny. Just, can you, here. Frank, hold on! What are you doing? Putting on your crown. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Uh, Frank, you remember the don't be and the do be? Well, you're most definitely a don't. And when it comes to you and your kind, I am done. Buzz off. <laughs> Dave, pucker up your proboscis. Okay, boys. Let's fly. You just heard To Be or Not To Be by Jacqueline Rheingold, directed by Michael Barakiva. It featured William Jackson Harper as Dave the Bee and Jen Harris as Franny. We're here with the playwright of To Be or Not To Be, Jacqueline Rheingold. It's director Michael Barakiva, Jen Harris, and William Jackson Harper. Hi, everybody. Jackie, is there something about the improbable that particularly intrigues you as a storyteller? 
Yes, I suppose. I mean, the, I remember when I wrote this play, I wrote it, it uh, the theme given to me was fear. So I actually tried to think of one of the things I'm most afraid of, which is actually bees, and um, what would happen if a giant-sized bee appeared in my home. That's where it started. I am still afraid of bees, but I would like to say that I'm very happily married now, which is a nice end um, to refer, not at all to a bee. But I would add that there's a sequel to this play, which is how Michael and I first met, that he directed the play where Franny comes back as a bee herself, and she meets a, a man uh, who is playing the piano at a wedding, and we met that way, and then I married this man, and Michael came to the wedding, and then I went to Michael's wedding, all quite recently and wonderfully. Yes, yes, yes. And they're both here and tonight. And they're both here, and, and they're, they're sitting next to each tonight. other. <laughs> Theater and life, so entwined. <laughs> Michael, do you think a man could have written this play? Um, do I think a man could have written this play? As it is, no, I don't think a man would have written this play. Um, I, I think there's something about the imagination of it uh, that, you know, the, what's great about the play is that it takes a sort of familiar situation. Something we talked about during rehearsal was what are the worst things we've all done after we've been dumped? And it gives it a theatrical imagination. So I think this is what theater does in its best form, you know, is take recognizable situation and make them impossible, like you said. Will, you're currently playing the black civil rights movement activist Stokey Carmichael on Broadway and all the way with Brian Cranston playing President Johnson. So on your Monday off, you're playing Dave the Bee. <laughs> What's that like? <laughs> it's, a, it's a welcome diversion. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I love Jackie's stuff. There is uh, such a touch of uh, the fantastical and how funny and... Uh, and uh, whimsical that can all be. It's it's great, and it's kind of it's kind of great to take a, a break from uh, the heaviness of <laughs> of the civil rights bill of, of 1964 to uh, seduce uh, a woman as she uh, waxes her legs. You did great. Thanks. Well, we have been speaking with To Be or Not To Be's playwright Jacqueline Rheingold, its director Michael Barakiva, and its cast. William Jackson Harper, and Jen Harris. Thank you so much. You've been listening to Playing On Air. Associate producer, Michelle O'Brien. Literary manager, Bonnie Antosh. Theme and play music, Tom Cochan. Recording and sound design by John Kilgore. Playing On Air is distributed by PRX. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can visit us at playingonair.org, where you can discover new shorts and interviews with amazing artists. Subscribe to Playing On Air on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. And to help us share great theater with new listeners nationwide, rate and review a show. It's the best way to spread the word. For Playing On Air, I'm your host, Claudia Catania. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs>